Uh, hi guys, Andrew Van Leeuwen from Motorsport Network here. Congrats to all three pairings on your result. Um, Brody. I just wanted to start with you. Like you had such an amazing week, so much car speed. Most Bathurst stories have an imperfection in them somewhere. Was it almost too perfect, the build up? Did you sort of think at any point, ah, oh, things are going a bit too well here? Uh, <laughs> wasn't the back of my mind a little bit. Yeah, we did have an awesome weekend, um, but I sort of knew um, around lap 70 or 80 when we didn't take uh, didn't take that safety car and these guys got 13 seconds of fuel on us and Richie was able to um, start only two or three places behind um, D. Ross, so I knew it was going to be pretty hard from there on out. So, And these guys were, um, you know, pretty much class of the field all day and, and um, you know, were the fastest car in race trim. So, um, yeah, we still had to have a perfect race to beat those guys and they did an awesome job and, and uh, yes, yeah, still a great weekend for the team and um, yeah, we'll come back better next year hopefully. Was was it that, you know, that safety car stop where you didn't stop that made the difference? I think D-Russ mentioned something about a tyre set that didn't feel quite right later in the race. What was the difference between winning and losing today, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I was I was never going to win the race from um, where I was, but yeah, the second last stop, I don't don't really know what happened. I put tyres on, and I was flat out doing tens. Felt like an absolute wobbler out there. So um, yeah, not really sure what happened. And then obviously we pitted again for the last stint, and was hoping for a safety car, and didn't want to use too much of my tyre. But yeah, car felt back to normal again. But yeah, I was a bit worried. Um, the second last stint, I thought the thing was falling apart. To be honest, you've come through these two big. 300 point single races, really well placed in the championship. I mean, they are great results in terms of a title tilt. Does that ease the pain at all? Not really. I want to win races. Over here, guys. Uh, Damien from Was here. Uh, question for you, Richie. Uh, you had a, cut, a really tough couple of years, mate. I want to get your thoughts on how you mentally got through that. You spent some time away from the sport, you fought back. Here you are, top step of Bathurst. A couple of parallels with uh, 2017 with the Sandown win. Uh, here we are and you're about to embark on a full time. How are you feeling? Yeah, feeling pretty good. Um, yeah, it was a pretty pretty rough time, to be honest, when I stopped racing. So uh, yeah, if you'd asked me a couple of years ago if I'd be here on the top step at Bathurst, it, I would have said it felt like a million miles away. So yeah, it's pretty surreal to be back here. and. Yeah, I was just very fortunate to, to get the opportunity to do that wild card last year and obviously that led on to the drive here at uh, Red Bull Ample Racing and then that's led, led me back to racing full time. So yeah, it's um, very satisfying to, to get things back on track and uh, yeah, I can't wait to, to go racing full time again. And speaking of that wild card, are you still particularly close with, well I know you were particularly close with Murph and obviously with Shane now. How has that relationship and how has that uh, kind of mentorship uh, evolved over the past 12 months? Yeah, it's, it's helped a lot driving with, with both of them because, uh, yeah, they're just two of the most iconic uh, drivers from New Zealand. So to drive with Greg last year was, I guess, yeah, I needed that inspiration to come back. And then same again this year, driving with Shane. It's just inspired me to get the most out of myself and um, yeah, come back and... Uh, do things properly. Uh, Shane, um, this is just the second time it's been an all New Zealand win at Bathurst. How, how special does that, that feel to you? I feel like I should know the other one, but who was it? Uh, Murph and Stephen Richards. Oh yeah, cool. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, obviously, as Richie touched on, you know, to get him back in the sport and, and then seeing how he is this year, his mentality and drive, focus, determination on and off the track. It's been um, really cool to work with him. And, um, yeah, just in some ways I wish he was replacing me in that car. I know they've got a capable driver replacing, but I was secretly hoping Richie would get the drive. But um, he's in a good team. You know, Grove's got some great people, and I'm sure he'll do well next year if, he's, if that environment says as what, I th what it looks like. Um, but, yeah, pretty, pretty special moment. Kiwi's uh, on the top step. And all, all weekend, Brody has been quicker than your car. Did you yep. always feel, though, that when it came to the race, you could be as fast? Or was there a point in the race today where you felt that you, uh, you could have the edge on them? 
Yeah, we were we were under the, under the radar pretty much in practice. We really did a lot of race runs and focused on that. You know, the soft tyre here and trying to make the car last a stint. I knew it would be a bit hotter today, and and you know, we really didn't have much speed in quality trim. Every time I went out on good tyres and low fuel, the car was really bad. But race runs, I was pretty happy. We tried a few combinations of setups and stuff, but our our long runs looked pretty good. You know, um, when we compared to. Um, Dave and Brody's times, we, we knew we were going to be strong in the race. So, yeah, just my shootout lap was pretty boring, just sat in the middle of the road and drove around and really conservative, you know, just knew that our race car was going to be okay. And the stacking risk here is is killer. You know, we had to get in front of trip, uh, double eight um, and it, it was a... It didn't, wasn't real nice atmosphere at the start of the race, you know, working out strategies to try to get in front of your teammates so you don't have to stack and... But yeah, that's the full time of this car. And but once once we had that um, that pit priority, we were there was no dramas. We were away. Uh, Michael mm. Laminato from Fox Sports. Just following up on that, uh, the talk <coughs> leading into the race was obviously about the race pace. But yep. then Brody was obviously setting some really great times and, and D Russ as well. And qualifying was a bit of a close call. Was it difficult to keep? that discipline knowing how important track position would be for things like the double stop building up to the race? Yeah, it's weird. Like, you're driving around doing eights at the start of the stint where you could be doing sixes. Like, it's, um, yeah, this car's... You're just driving around at 60%, really, the whole stint, trying to manage the tyres and then hope you got something left at the end. So it's very different here, different to last few years where you just flat out, like, for the last 400 k's or something, and I miss that feeling a little bit. But, um, yeah, we're just cruising, trying not to drop into the marbles, really. Was there a moment you were confident the wind was coming to you? No, I had so many problems with the car at the end. The rack, clutch, um, the last set of brakes wasn't very good, and then rubber kept falling out of the splitter. They kept saying they were pulling footballs out of the splitter every pit stop of rubber. And um, But, yeah, I had one five laps to go fall out at the cutting, and it fell onto the right rear tyre and I had a big slide so that wasn't very nice but um, yeah I just hope the thing held together and then obviously the teammates were having the gear shift issues so I was trying to be nice where I could but um, is what it is. Uh, Andrew Clark Auto Action. Um, Tony Anton, welcome. Do you feel like you've won the race almost? Um, no, I felt like it came third. Um, yeah. Doesn't feel special to you. Knowing where you started the weekend and uh, all that sort of stuff to come home so well on a podium with a Ford? Um, yeah, it's good, man. We, we worked hard at this one. We felt we had a really good race car all week. Similar to Shane, we spent a lot of time doing race runs and just doing that hard stuff, saving tyres for the race and all that thing, all those things. Um, I felt like we maximised our day, which I've, I think I said that a couple of days ago in qualifying, and we're third. So that's, uh, that's what we got. Um, it feels good. It's a relief, but it doesn't feel like a win, that's for sure. Shane, you've had a couple of big wins this year, obviously. Um, the championship now, is that uh, where your focus turns to, or do you just want to win every race from here? What's the gap now? Less than 150. Oh, yeah. So anything can happen. There's still there's only four races left or something, and you obviously Brody's doing very well. He doesn't make many mistakes in it. And as, as you have to be a bad day, still, he's still in the top five. So, yeah, he's an awesome driver and, and you know, their raw speed is definitely better than ours. Uh, our race pace is always pretty close. But, um, yeah, but Gold Coast is one of my better tracks and Adelaide is OK. So, yeah, hopefully we can put some pressure on them, but 150 points is still a lot. Brady, you've... We're through the enduro, so you've got to start thinking about the championship now. How, how, what is your approach going to be, given that there are only four races left? Try to win the next, the next four races. That's really pretty much about it. I feel like you ask me that same question all the time. <laughs> Fair enough. Shane, um, it's been known for a, a while now that you're leaving at the end of the year. There have been people observing, commenting that you might be distracted, agitated, not focused. Has this been a, a tough few months for you? What did they say today? <laughs> I'm not sure what they've said today. <laughs> what, what was the feeling then in the car in those final couple of stints when it sounded like, you know, Gen 3 Gremlins might be about to get you? 
I just, it's been the model all year. Everyone's got the same thing. So just imagine that everyone else was having rack dramas and break dramas and, you know, that's, everyone's got the same equipment. Um, so, yeah, just tr luckily we had a buffer and I could sort of not have to drive on the limit the last three years here. It's been a flat out high pressure race towards the end and this year you're just managing tyres, cruising. So, you know, still driving fast, but it's, um, it was nice to have a buffer. Shane, you made a couple of comments about, um, you know, sort of kind of wishing that Richie was going into the 97 yeah. next year. You know, back in Sydney, you said that part of this transition was you wanted to help the team find the driver that would replace yep. you. Did you recommend Richie as the guy that should step into your seat to the team? I didn't have too much input, to be honest, but at that point in time, I just wanted to make sure that before I committed to USA that they were happy with what they had. And Richie was obviously on the short lift list, but... Yeah, Jamie didn't involve me too much with uh, the main discussions about it. And Richie, you know, I remember standing in pit lane in Newcastle in 2019 when you sort of said, I'm done with this sport, I'm going to go back to New Zealand. You went back to New Zealand. Were there times there where you thought you wouldn't drive a race car again, let alone be entering, re-entering professional motor racing as a full-time driver? Yeah, I, I definitely felt like I'd made, made the right decision at the time. Like, it wasn't regretting it and I was enjoying my time away actually but um sort of just yeah had enough time um between stopping racing and um the wildcard opportunity to just be open to the idea of coming back and then it's kind of just progressed from there really um yeah doing the wildcard last year and you know sort of at the start of this year I was still very unsure if you know, I was just going to come back to co-drive and, and be around a little bit, but but not full time. But then, as the year progressed, I got more and more certain that it, that I uh, I wanted to come back racing full time. And uh, yeah, it's just been my experience here working at at Triple Eight, and it's given me confidence because yeah, the confidence was was pretty low after 2018 and 2019. I just felt like I felt like I'd forgotten how to drive basically, and then. You know, now joining a great team like this, and it's just given me a huge boost in my confidence again. So, um, yeah, that's why when the opportunity came came up to race it at Groves, I I was certain that it was the right thing to do to come back. Uh, Shane, I'm at Timothy from Auto Action. Um, before the eight eight went down, um, were you aware of what the projected split might have been at the last? pit stops yeah they said we had 15 seconds more fuel 10 to 15 and I was five ahead of him so my we were very heavy at that stop because we did brakes um, so he was pretty quick in that stint but mainly because of fuel so yeah I just wanted to stay in front so we kept the pit priority um, but yeah I knew that our stop was going to be shorter so we would be okay but I think they were pushing hard to try and clear the 99 and have you had a chance to have a word with um Brock or Jamie? Uh, only Brock, yeah, and um, he's gutted, as he should be. He was fast all weekend and, you know, had a good chance for a one-two for the team um, today in whatever order, you know. It was a rough day for them with the stacking early and then their recovery, what they were trying to do with the strategies to get back in front was, um, yeah, it was pretty good. They, they never gave up, so, yeah, pretty gutting and gutting for the super cheap guys as well with the, um, the same failure. Cheers, right, Another short one for me. I know, uh, obviously, the retirement of the 88 uh, may have, I guess, bolstered the, the gap back to first to second. Uh, it's the biggest gap since 99. Uh, do you care about those kind of stats? Obviously, it matches the same time, or the last Kiwi uh, pair to win the race. Is that, you know, a nice bit of serendipity? Nah, but I was just waiting the whole time for a safety car to come out. It's Normally, in Bathurst, there's always a late race safety car, so I was just hoping there wasn't, but... Yeah, the stats don't really mean much. Hey, uh, Tone, you're one of the really good stories here today as well. Back on the podium and, uh, what, 2017, I think it was, with Fabs, the last time that you got to stand up there. So just your time at Shelby Power Racing and, and how much they've been able to give you in your late part of the, the career as a driver. Thanks for the question, Chad. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, I've been with this team now for eight years. Absolutely love the group of people. 
Um, they, they're passionate about it. DJ comes to every race um, and he still loves it. He, uh, he's, he's as passionate as what the drivers are, the engineers and the rest of the team. So um, it's a great group of people um, and to repay them with a podium today. And, you know, they've worked really hard this year to try and get the, the car towards the front of the field. And, you know, it's no secret that it hasn't been easy. And uh, we've worked extremely hard this weekend to try and get in this position and uh, to get a trophy is really nice. Well done, mate. When you walked through the gate and had your pass scanned, did you think you'd be leaving with a trophy today? I thought maybe top five, but trophy was going to be a real stretch. Well done, buddy. Uh, last call for questions. Yeah, down here. Um, Thomas Miles from Water Action. Um, just another quick run for Shane. Um, I think you said on the TV, you um, yeah, you were hoping that yeah, you're going to come back next year in some stage. You might just sort of elaborating on that. Do you have? I don't know if you have set plans, but you obviously have no intentions on yeah, yeah, not coming back to the mountain ever again. Yeah, like I, I like this place and love the series. Still, you know, I want it want it to be successful. Um, but yeah, I don't have a schedule for next year yet. Um, I've said to Triple Eight, I will do the Enduros with them if it allows, but um, I want to be a Cup Series driver. So next year I'm going to fully immerse myself in NASCAR and Xfinity truck, some Cup stuff. And yeah, I don't know what my schedule is, but if it allows, I'll come back here. But I want to be in the Cup Series, so I'm doing everything I can to, to get there. Uh, okay, anyone else? Well done to all six of you. Thanks for a great weekend.